Welcome back, Five Aces. Battle control initialized. Hey, hey, people, Five Aces here. Guess what doesn't rhyme with boring and stale? It's RHL Season 13. Here we are. We've come this far. And uh, this is going to be basically the opening salvo to, um, to the new season. We're already uh, in the midst of it, despite me ca starting to cast now. Obviously, we've had a, a couple of delays due to the customs and so on. Yeah, so uh, let's just introduce the players real quick. This is a series that I'm really, really hyped about. In the bottom left, one of the uh, new and upcoming heavyweights of the competitive scene, Mr. Calf, spawning as Black and uh, as the Brits, to be more precise. The Brits have just screwed me out of 650 euros, but more on that in a couple seconds. And his opponent is Dang Shat. We've casted a couple series between the two and they've all been hyper competitive. So I'm really uh, stoked to see where this is going. Dog opener for Dang Shat. So he's definitely utilizing this Soviet early game advantage. Super early game that is until, you know, the first Ranger starts hitting the field. Oh, this is so good. He's inching his way forward slowly, never pressing his advantage, just shaving off a couple of rifles here and there. Oh, there is an assault coming his way. Oh, that's so nice. The micro is just picture perfect. He's still going to lose the engagement for the time being. Combat tab is fairly close. He's killed a couple more rifles. That's probably just courtesy of Kav uh, building a couple more rifles to begin with. Oh, that was a ballsy move. Didn't see that one coming. Dog out of left field. Immediately gets gets to feast on a rifle. That's pretty good. All right, so what's that about the Brits that I've been on about? People have been asking me, why the hell have you had to pay uh, 650 in customs? That's not to, due to Austria being weird. That's rather the European import laws due to... Uh, you, due to uh, Great Britain not no longer being in the European Union. So that's kind of a, an issue that is present in all EU's member states. If you import anything above a certain threshold of, I think, 100 euros, and this PC certainly was above 100, then you have to pay customs. And that's a lot. So that was where the 650... Uh, yeah, that's why where the 650 extra fee came from, and that's why... They have been, uh, basically the postal office have been holding my computer hostage for quite a while. But it's all resolved now. So, let's talk about this map. It is played on what looks like a spring tile set. That's a custom tile set anyway. Looks gorgeous and the name is Greener Pastures. We've heard this name before, but I I feel like it used to be in a different... Oh, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> feel like it used to be in a different, uh, in a different tile set or color palette at least. Maybe there's also a color overlay thing going on here. Dangshot being really good with his army movements, never uh, letting uh, his engineer out of sight. So, that's been a really tense early game. We still managed to weave in a couple tales about uh, <laughs> about uh, customs and tech support, so there's that. Kalf going for a light tank, so not opting for a ranger this time around. Going straight for the um, I'm heavily armored in loose quotation marks unit. Oh, what's that a ranger though? Wait, that certainly sounds like a ranger, huh? Oh, there he is. Never mind. He went double light vehicle. Yeah, that's El Clasico. Double light vehicle uh, pressure off of two refineries. And the Soviets, that's hard to deal with because the flak truck doesn't really contribute there. It can poke away at the ranger, but the ranger is way faster. By the way, the hospital has had some impact. That's always something noteworthy. Managed to patch up the dog. Good boy. Gets a treat. Also gets a, I don't know, probably a bone laced with a, laced with steroids to keep the health topped up. Ooh, oh, that was kind of unlucky from the APC, but oh, the turn rate. Almost managed to get away here. Oh, the dog is splattered. That's a tough engagement at the end of the day. Oh, is this light tank gonna live? It is gonna live indeed. Yikes. What a loss for Dang Shot. He lost, he lost a lot of units there. It was close. This could have gone either way. But Kav just singling out the rocket soldiers before they were able to deal the finishing blow to the light tank. I mean, this wind-up toy's got some staying power, huh? 
that ain't something you see every day. Expansions are out. Construction yard for Dangshat. There should also be an MCV out for Kav as well. So after all that's said and done, slight field advantage for Kav for the time being. Gets a lot more pressure on the map and his economy situ his economic situation is looking good. 6k ahead. That certainly doesn't feel right. But I guess it is. Triple barracks, fourth barracks being added in a couple seconds, I presume. Four barracks already out for Kav, so he's also going to be able to mass more units uh, more rapidly. Rapid deployment, and he gets to patch up his light tank. That is a sight that is uh, not, uh, not common. We're going to keep tabs on that. So that's just like watching fireflies mate or something. That's not, not an everyday occurrence, and if you're... A biologist, or in my case, an, uh, an open array forensic caster, professional forensic caster extraordinaire, then you don't get to see that every day and you have to just zoom in on that. No matter how quick and dirty it's gonna be. Sounds solid. Yeah, Dank Shot is forced and relegated into playing defense. Where are the tanks going? Nowhere. I'm holding the shift key, but we're not seeing any army movements just yet. Dank Shot is opting to take the right hand side. His plate is really smart. He has uh, deployed uh, pillboxes at both his expansion slots and then moving into the into the middle one, which is the more forward aggressive outpost. So he's basically limiting the options of where uh, of where Dangshot could attack while simultaneously just hedging his bets and being absolutely oof, the flame tower though, making absolutely dead sure that his his economy is set up properly. This is looking like a losing engagement for Kav, though. He's got a good Kong Kav, if you will. But uh, at the end of the day, there is just enough front of a front line to push this back. That was pretty well played from Dangshot. Despite this concave, he seized the, at the moment, he recognized the opportunity. Not overcommitting, he has traded off an entire army's worth of units. And just like that, balls back in his court. Combat tab. Oh, that is a swing and a half. Swing and a miss from Kav, if we're being honest. Let's take a look at this army dip. Yep, that is dipping like the British pound. Also, he's deploying Tesla coils, which obviously as Soviets, that is, a, that is a perk of being Soviets because Tesla coils are fairly scary if you're not scouting. Because one Tesla coil can easily ward off two tanks. And usually, if you're uh, if you're an allied player, you would go for a triple triple tank combo, to her, uh, double or triple tank combo to harass the backlines. You don't want to overcommit into sending all your tanks to the backlines. So one Tesla coil is enough. Unlike two pillboxes, two pillboxes don't do much against the tanks. So yeah, that is one of the perks of being Soviet. More tanks being added here. Is there a second war factory already out for Kalf? Doesn't appear to be the case. Nope. He's, whoa, he's well fortified in this middle position. I really like what uh, what Dangshot has been doing here. The only flaw in his plan, because he's been moving his original Kanyard a bit more to the south to have a more defensible location so his ore patch isn't exposed. That is smart thinking. He's also got a massive assault onto the main base, sniping the Raider Dome immediately. Oh, also the power lines. That is some critical structural damage here. Yikes, Kav is completely out of position. Oh, that's the Conyard down in just a hot minute. That is melting under the under the duress here. Wow. That was a quick turnaround and a half. Kav now has mobilized his entire strike force. Stop command is coming out. Ooh, the tanks are maybe a bit too far forward. On the other side, he is running through the eco lines as well. Some good crushes. That is some very, very good multitasking here from Dangshot. The double Raider Dome? What? Excuse me? He's been building a Raider Dome yet again here. Alright. That is interesting. This engagement is still going on. It is finally being won by Kav. But Kav has again suffered heavy losses here. He still has enough to push forward. Okay, the tank is getting through. Raider Dome is now established. Raider Tech is in. No more zap time. Oh, the V2s are coming in hot. This could be a really solid first opening shot. We're gonna zoom in on that. Uh, nope. 
Swing and a miss. He's transitioning back into the uh, into the light armor combination, which is a staple for Soviet play, Soviet uh, tier two play. As soon as the Yak comes online, he's basically going to have access to the map hacks. The Yak map hack. That is a tongue twister. At least no, it's not an alliteration either. It's just it's just a rhymes, just rhyming very nicely. All right, Black Hawk out for Cav. And this is super hard to play. The Unlike the Yaks, the Blackhawks are being caught off guard so easily. And Soviets have access to solid mobile anti-air, whereas allies really do not have that luxury. The, now the important task is to keep... A, oh, that's gonna be good. Nice shot. Shaving off some infantry already. Yeah, the, the really hard task is to keep your mobile flags alive and... Keep the V2 rocket launchers at um, in a perfect position to always defend. To always defend without losing uh, losing them to the Blackhawks. Tanya is out, so tier 3 already for Kav. That is super ballsy. The Harvesters are being used to soak up some damage here. Ooh, good shot from the V2. Oh, also a really good crash landing. Yeah, that was solid. Still, he is bound to lose his refinery as well as two harvesters. He's traded off an entire army though, so I highly doubt that's worth it. Oh, there is Tanya. She has been scouted. Dangshot knows of Tanya's presence. There's a tech center here as well. This may be time for a demo truck, question mark. Oh, what a risky position for Kav. I mean, he only has one MCV, right? He never rebuilt his, his original MCV. He is on one base. This is so all in. Oh my lord. Tanya. Oh, he missed Tanya! Yikes! Just a little misclick here. Yeah, he needs to send out Yaks. Yeah, it is a demo truck indeed. Oh my lord. This is gonna either spectacularly backfire or it's gonna nuke the entire army into oblivion. Oh, okay. Flag truck being primed at the Blackhawk. What a game one. Just gotta put it out there. This was amazing already. This has already been a really valiant effort. Okay, second attempt at sniping Tanya. Where's the demo truck arriving? He should probably... Hmm, is he gonna park it into the... Straight into the conyard? That would be a good choice in my opinion. Power down for now. No, wait. No, no. That's just the spectator bug. Maybe two more flak trucks would be required to keep this army composition afloat. Dangshot has enough anti-armor uh, anti in the form of rocket soldiers, so he doesn't really need more. Okay, flag truck trying to poke and prod. There is another ore refinery here, so the income situation should be relatively even. Also, the map is mined out, essentially. Oh, here comes the shoebox of doom. The little shoebox with the radioactive sign is now in. Okay. Hiding behind the tree. Trying to angle. Oh, that's gonna be a really good angle. Ooh, this is already gonna be so worth it. Prepare yourselves, folks. We've got blast off. <laughs> Scorched Earth policy. My lord, Ukraine delivers. <laughs> the Arty just in time to see the, the entire army being blasted away. Yeah, that was a really solid hit. He caught Tanya as well. Flak and Yak combo seems... Yeah, yeah, Flak and Yak is the, the best combo here. Just a bit flimsy. Can fall apart very easily. Ooh, good hit and run. Oh, the satellite is in. So for the time being, Tanya is still here. Oh, she's being blasted away at by the Yaks. Ooh, this crash though. Okay, all the, um, all the air units for Kav are out. All the air units for both sides are out, actually. It's almost exclusively tanks remaining for Kav. I don't know if that's a good... That's a... Ooh, good crush, though. That's the classic Ganon composition. Where you're out of options, so you just revert back to... Basically, tanks and rifles. No money for rockets, no time for rockets. Some V2s being added for Dang. This is now difficult, because... Against only rifles, this is low impact. Against only rifles, you don't get you don't get too much return on investment, so that's never a good call in my opinion. 
target fire, not the best here. Uh, good hit from the V2, decent at least. Satellite is now out. Tanya immediately being sniped, zero impact on her. Uh, still though, Kav is managing to push forward. It's too much multitasking. That's on the menu, yep. Down goes the V2, down goes the Yak. Here is a para drop, just for good measure. In the back lines, trying to snipe away at an ore truck. Uh, Kav is immediately, uh, he's not oblivious to the situation, immediately reacting. Iron Curtain, yeah, that could be a really good call. The Kav's tank micro was good, he also got some really good crushes. I feel this is the game for Mammoth tanks. In this game, so uh, in this game there's a high rifle density, that's where Mammoth tanks are really, yeah, unopposed if the rocket density is low for your opponent. And I feel like uh, this is one of those games where you can slowly build up critical mass. If ever there, is a, there were a game for Mammoth tanks, it would be this one. Especially after that demo truck nuked away. <laughs> like 20 bazookas. Uh, okay. Map is mined out for both players. The economy, uh, the economy is in shambles. 61k over 50k assets, but Kav is certainly not out of this game just yet. Uh, first missile hitting. Also, the Iron Curtain is going to play such a critical role. Mix, yeah, Mix are also really smart. Mix can be used to either snipe away at the harvesters because there is no reliable money for anti-air, or they could also be used to just take out tanks one by one. This is a relatively, uh, it is a relatively cost-efficient way of dealing with them. If you can spare the micro and the APM. I also really love that there is still one, uh, one flak truck in this composition. Yep. One MiG is just enough to kill a harvester. Ooh, he's angling. Ooh, yikes. MiG goes down, but crucially takes out a harvester. So this is, in the long run, this does favor the MiG player. Despite them losing 2k over a 1.1k uh, asset investment. But the MiG, unlike the, unlike the Harvester, is a combat unit and uh, it would have returned uh, its investment over time. And as it stands, you have to invest into non-combat units. By the way, the Nafsat is almost back to being online. What a game one here. This is really dynamic. So many moving, uh, so many moving pieces in this puzzle that it's really amazing to watch those two players going at it. Couple more Yaks for a tech center snipe would also not go awry. Yeah, the map is completely mined out. Iron Curtain almost ready. It is almost a dang shot on 71 APM. Let us check that real quick. Yeah, this is looking like... This is looking so calm and cozy, but it certainly isn't. This is a super high duress situation. Yeah, 70 APM, that's uh, something that I also tended to uh, end up or... Not averaging, that would be awkward in a... In a long drawn out match, you can't really maintain 70 APM. Open Array calculates it differently from StarCraft, by the way. Even though Open Array obviously is lower APM than StarCraft. Let's, let's be clear about that. But it also calculates them in a different manner. So, uh, StarCraft APM is, uh, looks to be inflated, or is inflated, comparatively speaking. The plus of Doom? Is there gonna be a plus of Doom? Not yet. Ooh, the mammoth tanks just selling their hide dearly. Ah, uh, only one of the mammoths got uh, iron curtained. It is the one that is currently being target fired, so good on dang shot. There is still 10 seconds left. He can push back as hard as he likes for now. Satellite has been terminated. Oh, he was fighting into a, a satellite timing. That is something to uh, to keep track of if the allied player has the satellite online that usually means that you don't want to fight for the time present yeah killing the refiner is the smart move also kiting back with the mammoth tanks what's the follow-up did you deal with those three tanks he sort of did and oh there's a mammoth as well the para bombs perfect line damage oh my lord this was brilliant play. He's losing his army right there. Needs to make sure he doesn't lose to an all-in push now, by the way. 
So this game still up in the air. One more MiG has been added. Could it go Harvester sniping, I guess? Yep. One more Harvester down. One more down the drain. So, basically, Dang Shot is in a winning position. He needs to make sure, though, that he doesn't fall to the next all-in push. This is his prime directive for now. He needs to absolutely make sure that he doesn't lose uh, to this all-in. Let's see. The Iron Curtain timing is going to be so crucial. 20 seconds. There is also paratroopers ready as well as the spy plane. Spy plane can play a, a big role in those, uh, in those high impact fights. All of a sudden you've got line of sight, you've got the map hack at least on a small portion of the map. Kav is forced into giving up his position there and sending his MCV back to the home base to rebuild some uh, some refineries, yeah. I can totally see that because he lost a double mine here. Oh, another vulnerable harvester has been found. This should be dead for all intents and purposes. Or as uh, some folks tend to say, for some intensive purposes. Cap of Ride. Tech Center should be the next target of choice. Ooh, he's selling off. Yeah, it's not looking good for Kav. That there goes the neighborhood. There all there also goes uh, the spy satellite. No more Navsat for the time being. Yeah, selling off. Yep, there is Dang Shot moving in the cavalry. In comes the MCV, so he's gonna have access to one more ore mine. Kav is not building anything at the moment. It's looking dire. He is in dire straits. This has been a, a really even game for a long time, but it's about to come to to come to a closure here. Yeah, not falling prey to those flanks. The tank flank being accounted for, the harvester preemptively being pulled back. Very smart. Down goes one tank. Man, the tank micro has really kept him in the game though for a very long time. Four tanks down. All in push on the other side of the map. How does he keep on having armies ready? This is insane. Maybe uh, Bang will stall with the, uh, with the Tesla being curtain? Nope. There's still a lot of infantry coming in here. Good lord. How does Kav afford that? Down goes the MiG that didn't do much. Oh, no space to deploy here. Yikes! Down goes the Iron Curtain without curtaining anything. Is this gonna be the all-in to end, uh, uh, to turn the game? Let's see. How does the economy look like? 71k or 44k, but it doesn't look like it. There's just so much army left for Kav. On this side, though, he's losing his economy yet again. It is split map. Wide concave being formed, but no Iron Curtain to boot. Three Mammoth tanks, two heavies. Is that enough of a frontline for this beefy, beefy infantry corps? It appears to look like Kav is pushing through. Mammoths are kiting back to the best of their ability. There is still so much infantry left here. But it's being thinned out. Oof. What a nasty engagement. Okay, the sell-off has been issued. There's an engineer. Just pointing it out. There is an engineer. As long as there is an engineer, there is hope. This, yeah, he may be forced to abandon his tech center for the time being. How is Kav still pushing? How does he still have the pushing power? It is complete insanity. This man is not to be starved out economically. I do not know how this is feasible. I, honest to God, have no clue how this is even humanly possible. More mammoth tanks are being added. Oh, this is the one and only war factory for Kav. Soon as this goes down, there's not gonna be any vehicle production and I feel like the vehicles have been the backbone of this army. Who has finally been pushed back out of this position. The Conyard is still alive. There goes another run of the Parabombs. Oh, finishing off the War Factory. What an insane game. And this is game one out of two. How? 
How is this possible? How does Kav still have money? 17k assets. The army graph has been wild. It's been a really wild ride. Okay, the Chichu has been issued. Yeah, he's lost his main base. That was it. What a game one. This was probably one of the best games I've seen in the past decade, in, in the past year. Oh my lord. This was highly enjoyable. All right, we're going to dive straight into game two. I'm a non-smoker, but I'm like, yeah, this would warrant a smoke if I were a smoker, certainly. All right, see you in a sec. Battle control terminated. Battle control initialized. Here we are in game number two. Welcome. Uh, we've got ourselves a Ukraine mirror this time around. Must resist the urge to uh, make Crimea chokes because too soon, way too soon. Oh, this is actually a really terrible, terrible conflict that is going on right now. But let's focus back on something uh, a bit more positive. So this is another, yet another custom tile set. This does not look like the original tile set. It's a bit more saturated, I guess. Hmm. All right. Anyway, the map in question is Abendland, and we've seen Abendland before. This has been in the map pool. Maybe a new iteration. Is it maybe just my screen that has a different color saturation on that one? Maybe it is the original tile set after all. But it appears to have, yeah, I don't know. Color saturation is a bit off. Uh, maybe you can help me in the comments here. Okay, Kav and Dangshot both go for their traditional respective colors yet again. This is the map uh, with the contestable oil derrick in the middle. We're seeing some grants being rushed over from Kav. I don't know, that is a... I do remember this map being in season, what, uh, season 10 or something? And I remember losing to rushes on it every single time. Got to the point where I, where I think I started banning this map. Or maybe it was a map with a similar layout. Right, where are they going? Oh, into the power. I doubt that Dangshot is going to have this on the radar. He's also... Wait. Oh no, can't stop a refinery. Looked to me a bit like it uh, like it was a ref into warfare. Oh, he has cancelled his defensive structure. Yikes. Spreading out the Grens. In comes the ore truck to salvage the situation. Ooh, this was already some damage being done here. Another Gren down, but that's completely fine. Dangshot has had all his uh, rifles in the front lines. Yeah. Maybe he can do some damage to the oil derrick. Oh, he's hiding. Hiding away in a corner. So, after all this, not much pressure as a follow-up. Dangshot is really behind, though. That's a 30-second time, timing advantage um, on the War Factory. Just off the... I think he had to cancel the War Factory to build a second power plant. Really good. <laughs> he's starting, starting to look for the grin. He knows the grin is still around. Look at this pathing. <laughs> Covering everything. Yeah, good sir. Oh. Is he gonna lose? Nope. The hit was not a direct one. Cause if the if the grenade lob is if the grenade toss is really good, it gets it down to half health and sometimes if you're lucky with the RNG and it doesn't and it doesn't prone the rifle, then you can actually kill uh you can actually kill the rifle one v one. But it requires a lucky toss. Okay, Kav now building up some pressure onto the middle, onto the Derek, and defense is still uh, in the mix for, for Dangshot. Kav has not taken his own oil Derek. Right, he has now. Ah, there's a second oil Derek that has not been grabbed just yet. Bit of a risky move here. The first light vehicle is out for Dangshot. But it is met or matched with an APC from Kav. So both players with a relatively even. Uh, for some numbers and down goes the oil derrick almost immediately no repercussions here fear the repercussions all right five harvesters out in comes the service depot this is going to be a good timing on the mcv from calf dang shot is really behind so he's going to have 15 seconds on the ore truck then he has to uh yeah service depot is coming online just now and then he has to build the the mcv as well so this is almost ballooned into a minute of a timing advantage. 
it's interesting how these uh, how these expansions work because this um, this ore mine is really far away from the billable terrain, so you basically get long distance mining, and it slows that the rocks slow down the harvester as well. So this is a diminished returns on that mine. More barracks being added. Dang shot now. Yeah, just building up some mass in his main base. Does not want to be caught off guard. Uh, we've heard some shots from the APC. Oh, okay. Dang shot has now claimed this oil derrick. He's on triple oil. Like, wait a second. Kalf has managed to sneak his engineer all the way to the other side of the map. The ninja near play. 200 IQ ninja near play. Ah, too late, my friend. And has Dangshot lost his uh, his uh, engineer already? Feels like it. Where did it die? Or is it still in the APC? That's also an option. All right. Yeah, still in the APC. Oh, this could be a good route into a comeback. Just stealing away the ore refinery. It's even worse in, in TD, by the way, and in TD the harvesters stay docked for so long. And if you capture the... Oh, exfiltration! Nice! If you capture the refinery just as the... Wait a sec! Calf, my friend, you had one job! Yikes! Yeah, if you capture the ore refinery just as, uh, just as the harvester is docking, you get to steal the harvester as well. But in RA it takes like two frames to un uh, to unload. So it's very highly unlikely there. In the campaigns it's sometimes easily possible because uh, the AI doesn't know what to do with the money so they're floating and as a result the harvester will stay docked and then it's super easy to steal. So there's that explosive oil drum in the middle. Bit of a risky maneuver. Where is the MCV going? Very far forward. So Ka feels like he has the advantage. He's gonna start pressuring on this side. And he has taken the top right as well, so he's moved out extremely aggressively. This is starting to look like the gatekeeper build. Ah, uh, cutting down the middle is Ka and opting to go for the long distance mining operations. No signs uh, of the of the push for Dangshot just yet, who is completely blind here. Surprise, motherfucker! Yeah, he's forced into back into defense. I don't know. This was an absolute win here for Dangshot. Who has managed to stifle this push. Ooh, are those gem mines? No, they're not. No gem mines here. Heavy tank in the back lines for da for Kav as well. Power down from Dangshot. Unlucky timing. Ooh, that's gonna be a juicy target. Blowing up the ore refinery would be a prudent move. Yep. Ooh, tap one tapping it. A single volley. That's all she wrote. The front lines for Dangshot are completely out of position. Ooh, the tanks. They are not in the best of positions here. Kav moving forward with his tank commander forces. Oh, this is a massive win. The infantry completely depleted from Dangshot. Nothing remains here but scorched earth. Kav, with the better positioning in this little ravine, gets to dictate the flow of combat. Yeah, that was very good. That was, yeah, it was a pathing issue as well. I agree, but it was just smart positioning from Kav. Taking the fight in the ravine, having his units up front, and just having the better position. As a result, I think he's got enough staying power to continue the push here. Certainly starting to look like it. Yeah, this is looking really good for Kav in game number two. This is starting to look like a draw. Yep, a draw it is. One and one, respectively. What a series. Game number one, completely insane. Tier 3 tech, demo truck, everything. And game number two being decided by three grands. Those hero grands snipe make power plant at the most crucial of timings, forcing a cancel on the war factor. And as a result, Dangshot being behind an entire minute in his build time, 
that completely messed up his passing, it messed up his timings, it messed up his expansions. And that all snowballed and ballooned into a massive lead for Kav, which he capitalized upon in uh, taking the engagement in the ravine with an armor advantage. So at the end of the day, just very methodical play in game number two from Kav. Three grands into GG. What a series. Both, both games played on an insanely high level and I'm willing to bet that these two are gonna be title contenders for season number 13. I am hyped for the future. Now let's get back to casting some Shadow Paradise, which will be uploaded shortly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Five aces, out. Battle control terminated.